Okay, you guys, we've got one more video in order to finish up this uniform distribution problem. Okie dokie, so let's go and answer four and five. Uh, real quick, though, I wanted to show, I forgot to do this in an earlier video, so we saw that we went and calculated out our PDF value or our probability density function. It's just a constant value of 0 0.3, you know, 0 0.07, etc., etc. Well, if we come over here and we look at this graph that we've been working with, the height of this box is that density. This 0 0.3, 0, 7, etc., etc. is where our box is actually located. So physically, if we need to look at it graphically, that's what our probability density function is. Now, other uh, distributions that we work with have, you know, like a function, maybe like a sinusoidal wave or a hump. Um, and those have different PDFs, but for this one, we just, our PDF is a single value from, that is constant from our minimum to our maximum. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer number four. What is the probability that she will spend between two and 3.25 hours? Well, let's just continue on doing this. We can say the probability that really she's going to spend more than two but less than 3.25. That's what we're looking for. We can answer this really easily. Go to distributions again and back to the uniform. Let's go to probabilities. And let's set this up again as 0.75 to 0.4. What we're going to look at is we're just going to look between two values. So I'm going to put 3.25 comma and then two. So I, those are my two critical values that I'm interested in. I want to use lower tail so they get the probability of being less than 3.25, the probability of being less than 2, and I'm just going to subtract them from each other. Okay, I'm going to click OK, come back over here, and what I can do is, do that's the probability of 3.25 minus this probability. Hit Enter, and I get this associated probability. We get that, and let's round it to the correct number of decimal places. We'll drop it down to four. And we'll drop this one down to four, too. Okay, there we go. That would be our the probability of between those two. That's super handy. Um, let's go ahead and do the, the last one. So this is number five. It says, what are the max and min times of the middle 70% of her cases? All right, so this is a little bit different. So remember, our distribution we have, we go from 0% is, you know, before 0.75 to all the way to 100% when we hit 4. And if we kind of put a line down the middle or where expected value was, if we went and grabbed the expected value again, we would see um, where that balance point was. And 50% of the data is on one side and 50% of the data is on the other side. Uniform distributions are what are called symmetrical. If you were to fold them about the center, they would be the same. Okay, so if we want to find the middle 70% of our cases, here's what we're really looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to do equals 0.5 plus, and we do like percent of interest, divided by 2. Let me put a space in there real quick. Control C. And then we're going to do the same thing, but minus that. OK, and let's hit Enter. So when we do this, just work with me just for a second. So we're going to say equals 0.5 plus 0.5. 0.75 divided by 2. We're going to say equals 0.5 minus 0.75 divided by 2. Okay, so what we're really looking for is what these are called, these are called quantiles. Quantiles and quantiles. So when we hear about this like 87 and a half quantile, what it's saying is that, okay, we want to know on this graph where 87.5% of people are less. And then the same thing again, where are 12.5 people less? And between those two, 
we will see the middle. Oh, I guess I did 75, didn't I? I should definitely do 70. Give me a second. There we go. So we're looking from 85 to 15, where 85% of the data, or yeah, 85% of her cases are less, and then where 15% of her cases are less. And the middle will give us where the middle 70% 70, 70 of her cases are. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. All you got to do is go to distributions, continuous uniform again, but this time we go to uniform quantiles. Nice thing is it asks for the same information. Remember, the min and the max is the only thing that we need to uh, fully define a uniform distribution. And then we just need these probabilities, or we need to know, okay, what's the probability of, you know, that the data will be less than 85% of the time and less than 15%. So it's like, these are the probabilities that we need to type in. So I'm going to put 0 0.85, comma, and then do 0 0.15. And then I'm going to click OK. It's going to give me some associated um, associated values or number of hours that she spends in the middle 75 or the middle 70 percent. Now let's graph it again and see if it actually looks right. We'll go to back and plot it. And this time I'm going to go from well, let me just copy this over. We'll see if you can copy and paste. I hadn't had good luck with it in here. Maybe, ah, there we go. Took me a second. Oh, let's actually push that over. Wrong spot. Oops, not quite. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So I got these values inputted over here. And now I can just click OK. This is the middle 70%, and that, that actually looks pretty dang um, close just from what my eyeballs can see, and I know that it's right because that's what I shoved in through our commander. Okay, so there we go. That's how you can use our commander to help you out answering these questions. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me, um, but that's the end of how to use our commander for uh, uniform continuous distributions.